A day after Argentina and the IMF reached a, a new agreement to unlock billions uh, in IMF funds, uh, Latin America's third largest economy announced a new sky-high inflation numbers. Joel Richards has more from Buenos Aires. Not since 1990, in a period of hyperinflation, has Argentina seen such high levels of inflation. With the official figures released on Thursday afternoon, Argentina has overtaken Venezuela with the highest inflation rate in Latin America. The National Statistics Institute reported a 25.5% increase in prices in December alone, taking the annual figure for 2023 to 211%. These are the first inflation figures for libertarian President Javier Milei, who won his election on the promise of taking hard decisions to stabilize the economy through unprecedented austerity measures. From day one in office, Milei warned that inflation would rise in the early months of his presidency. In his first week in government, Milei devalued the peso by 54%. The government also removed price controls on many products and services. These two factors largely explain the spike in inflation in December, doubling the monthly double-digit inflation left by the previous government of Alberto Fernandez. Joel Richards, CGTN, Buenos Aires. For more on this uh, inflation crisis, uh, joining us is uh, Ottaviano Canuto, senior fellow at the Policy Center for the New South and former VP at the World Bank. Good to see you again. Um, last time we spoke was uh, shortly after the election, and we talked about some of the, the things that they would do to solve the problem of inflation, which was a big problem last year, and as you just heard, it still is a big problem and certainly far from being solved. But before we get there, um, explain to us and our, our viewers how is it possible that inflation is at 200 percent? Because th these are numbers that's very, very difficult for, for the rest of us to, to understand how they got here. Yeah. Uh, Phil, it's always a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, and look, uh, the fact of the matter is that this spike of inflation was expected. They reflect, as of now, as since December, decisions by the new government to undergo a very a uh, heavy package of, uh, of adjustment. Uh, the, the devaluation, the exchange rate devaluation, uh, of course, brought in uh, a tremendous impact in terms of a uh, higher price, as well as the elimination of some of the uh, distortive uh, ceilings that the, the previous government had established as an attempt to curb inflation. So we all knew that, at least temporarily, there would be a spike of the inflation. The gamble by Malay is that the the uh, the uh, the drastic fiscal adjustment that he has pledged to do, uh, together with uh, the the stoppage of uh, monetary financing of the public debt, uh, might allow for uh, let's say even if the inflation reaches 300 percent a year in this first half of the year, it would start to come down in the second half of the year. Uh, if he managed that, and if he managed to recompose the uh, the external buffers, uh, you know, then the signals might start uh, changing. The perception by foreign capital would change, and it could work. But in the short term, the pain was inevitable. The legacy is was so terrible in terms of fiscal uh, uh, disadjustment. And, uh, and also the plethora of uh, small ceilings of price uh, and so on, the distortions were so, so huge that one knew that any drastic attempt to change the picture of the fiscal uh, thing and of the external accounts uh, would be painful as it is. So well, well, one of the issues is a country uh, is only as good as sort of what people view you as, right? There's a public relations part of it. You have the the expenses you mentioned, the, the, the public expenses of, of all the different departments. Then you have also the tax revenue that comes in, and you either run a surplus or, or a deficit, and clearly in this situation it, it is a deficit. But the original plan was to cut back on spending, potentially even raising taxes, where is that plan, and when does that get enacted, if if ever? Well, uh, the the expenditure cuts uh, have already been announced by 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 the, the president and his minister of finance, 
and uh, and we will see them uh, taking place along the year. The problem is that, uh, for the time being, the impact of the uh, change of uh, the exchange rate, as well as the other measures of correction of relative prices, will still keep on impacting inflation. It's going to be tough, and 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 the recession will be very deep. Uh, the IMF itself was already forecasting a downfall of Argentina's GDP this year uh, of uh, more than 2.5 percent. So the GDP will be decreasing while the inflation will still be high. Uh, the only hope of changing this scenario is that uh, the government succeeds, the, the president succeeds in cutting the expenditure and, and, and curb the process of uh, self-feeding of inflation later there, on. There, there was this other big plan um, called dollarization. Yeah. And ex ex expl explain it. to us where we are with that particular plan, and, and do you think that would even work? Now, it is suspended. Uh, in order for Argentina to move ahead with uh, any uh, project of dollarization, Argentina would have to have uh, a minimum amount of reserves in dollars uh, to be the base of the monetary uh, circulation in the economy. It doesn't have. In fact, as of today, the external reserves of Argentina are still on the negative side, including the debt that it has with uh, China, with uh, the, 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 the PBOC, uh, the line, credit line, uh, the swap line uh, that was used by Argentina in the previous government to avoid a default with the IMF. And as we know, as of now, we, we understand that uh, 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 this line is suspended. Uh, so even if Argentina doesn't have to pay back China immediately, the money that was used in September. Real, real, real quick, I got about 30 seconds left. Um, you know, obviously this is terrible for Argentina. What, is it possible this problem could spread to other countries or other neighbors um, nearby in Latin America? No, no, not more than what it has been the case with uh, the, the, the bad macroeconomic performance of Argentina. But uh, there is no way uh, what's happening in Argentina might contaminate, might create any contagion to the, the neighbors.